Good evening, and welcome to This Week in Paranormal, your half-hour dive into the mysterious, the unexplained, and the otherworldly. I'm Sean Wagner, your guide through the latest and strangest of all things paranormal. From ghostly encounters to UFO sightings, ancient mysteries to modern-day miracles, we'll explore the stories that challenge our understanding of the natural world and captivate our imagination. This week's stories include clear and exciting footage of a UFO filmed over the United States, being poached by the paranormal. Also, a Reddit picture of a figure in the mirror. All links will be in the description below. So sit back, buckle up, and get ready to explore the unexplained on this week in paranormal. For our first video of the night, we have clear and exciting footage of a huge UFO flying over the United States. It appears to be flying alongside the highway and then lands in an industrial part of town. What do you think? Is it CGI? Please post in comments and let us know. Our next segment is being poked by the paranormal. This is the poster's husband reporting getting poked as he sat in the living room. You can see the skin appear to move. This is the same people that did the door opening and closing in the prior episode. You could, you could not see the lower portion of the door as it opened and closed. I haven't ever heard of someone catching being poked on video and it happens to be caught right in the middle of the camera which happen to be very conveniently located. You decide, and again, feel free to post in comments what you think. Here we have a picture that comes to us from Reddit, from St. Augustine, Florida. It's taken through a mirror. Check it out closely and you can see a possible figure next to the woman. It looks to have a skull-like head. The body is kind of hard to make out. I always tell people to be careful what you take when looking through mirrors. You don't know how clean or dirty it is. That can make a difference. Also, uh, pareidolia maybe? Let us know what you think in the comments. For our first broadcast, it comes to us from Oh My Gosh TV, along with Jasco and James the Fam. They talk about their findings on the investigation into the Miami Bayside Mall possible alien encounter. James the Fam interviewed workers and other people who frequent the area near the mall and states his findings in this clip. I'm not always sure what to think of some of Omar's topics, but this one certainly is very interesting. Check it out as there are other possibilities to what happened. Um, summary so i ended up talking to this guy it was totally random it wasn't even here believe it or not but anyways they basically asked him if he you know did he hear about what had happened and he's like yeah man i know exactly what happened and he basically said that okay in miami it's known as a very large import of drugs it always has even back since the 80s and cocaine and stuff like that apparently there has been that the head guy that that produces stuff here or sells stuff or imports it decided to cut off this region 
and a lot of people were upset. So they all came to congregate here to meet. So the thing I keep on wondering is if this alien thing happened, we already know there's no footage, but all these people were all saying they saw the fight, they saw fireworks. None of them saw the beans. No one saw the aliens. Well, no one they all said that. Closed early. A you lot know, of them closed, but there were certain people that I interviewed that were there at that time. And what he said is half the stores had already closed. The other half of the stores didn't close until the commotion started happening. People started running. They all locked their doors and closed at that point. So even if there was aliens, the store owners would not have seen it. Is True. What you're saying. I mean, that could be possible. But what I keep on thinking is we already we don't have anything. If they knew that these fights have been happening every year for several years, which it has, the one guy showed us video footage of fight last year on yeah, the same day. That. Why wasn't their cop present here before all this stuff happened? There wasn't. They had their normal security. They had no cops here, right? Doesn't make sense. Well, according to what this guy tells me, it answers that question. Mm. And he basically said that there was people here that he knows of that were undercover. And he said it wasn't necessarily cops that were undercover, but more of like ops. And it makes sense because- Like government officials? Government officials, right. Cause one of the things I put on Twitter was there's four things that could be true. One, it was really aliens coming to Miami. Number two, it was demons coming out of a portal. Number three, what the cops said is true and it was kids fighting, which is true, yes. Or number four, it was a manufactured distraction. Mm. According to what this guy told me, they came in and did the alien thing as a distraction. And the only thing... And to that cover they, this story up about the drugs? Well, I, I don't think so. What I think, is, what my theory is, is they, they knew that these fights were going to go down. Okay. So they used that to use it as a distraction. Now, what happened the same day that this all happened? The... I don't want to say it, but the you remember list. that guy that oh, has an island? Epstein's list, yeah. Right, yeah. Epstein's list came out that day. That Was it that day? Listen, yeah, that same day. For our second broadcast, we go to the Y Files. In this clip, AJ and Hecklefish discuss the story of a pilot named Brian, a Navy pilot stationed in Antarctica for years who flew over the no fly zone over the middle of Antarctica to save the life of a scientist. He's being questioned by the men in black as we join in for going over the no-fly zone. After delivering their patients safely to McMurdo, the crew was summoned to the commander's office. I was summoned to the commander's office once, human. Once. Enough with the Johnny Dangerously references, okay? In the room was an officer they'd never seen before. Also present were two men dressed in suits. Men in black. Yep. Again. Yep. The new officer asked about the decision to violate the no-fly zone. The crew explained they had no choice. The patient would have died if they had to fly all the way around. Then the officer just started slowly pacing back and forth, thinking to himself. Finally, he looked at the men in suits, who stepped forward. They said, Okay, gentlemen, what you saw, you did not see. You were not over that area. You will never go over that area. You will never ever talk about this ever again. Understood? The crew agreed. Brian's been retired from the Navy for a few years, and even though he's never signed a non-disclosure agreement, he's still not comfortable giving his full name. Smart. He was with the Navy for years and flew hundreds of missions in Antarctica. He saw silver UFOs on many occasions, as did other flight crews. It was such a common occurrence that it became routine banter at the mess hall. Brian didn't think much of the incident until a few months later. He was assigned to fly a group of scientists to the dome at the South Pole. The dome was decommissioned in 2010, but at the time there were other buildings inside the dome. Obviously offices and labs, but there was also a galley. Brian was in the galley one day and overheard some civilians talking about the infamous air sampling station. You know, the one in the no-fly zone with the Vatican ice hole. A giant hole in the ice, yes. The civilians were saying that they were going back out there to meet some visitors. Brian heard other crews saying similar things. They were taking people to the hole at the South Pole to talk with visitors. Finally, Brian asked what they meant by visitors. What do you mean by visitors? And he said, well, my impression was that they weren't human. <laughs> I said, human? 
You know, I said, what are you talking about? He says, it seemed to me they were talking about like an extraterrestrial or an alien because they didn't refer to them as a person. It was a visitor. The rumors had been circulating for years. That 300 foot hole in the ice is an entrance to a base, a base where humans and aliens are cooperating on some type of project. What the project is or was, we don't know. This was the 1990s. But now we have Google Earth. The military is doing their best to cover up their activity in Antarctica, but there are some photographs that they just can't explain. For our third broadcast, author Eleanor Wagner on her YouTube channel talks with the niece of Betty and Barney Hill, Kathleen Marden. They talk about her aunt and uncle's story on the UFO encounter, as well as her extensive investigation into it. Here she talks about the UFO approach in the car. What happened to them that night? Well, they uh, were returning home overnight, anticipating an arrival at two o'clock in the morning. They had traveled from Montreal uh, to Colebrook, New Hampshire, arriving uh, at about nine o'clock or so, uh, eight there, uh, left at 10.05. They checked their watches against the clock in the restaurant and uh, headed south. They were returning home to their house on the seacoast in Portsmouth. The reason they made this decision is that a hurricane was whirling up the coast and they wanted to arrive home before it hit. Also, they made the decision that they would stop overnight if they grew tired, but they were well rested from the night before. They were having a wonderful vacation and they were just traveling south on Route 3 through upstate New Hampshire when just south of Lancaster, my aunt spotted a new light in the sky and what drew her attention to it is that it was traveling upward in sort of an arc uh, and uh, she had never seen anything like that. And it was sort of the reverse of a falling star. She wondered what it could possibly be. She thought of a satellite, it wasn't a satellite. She thought of a falling star, it wasn't a falling star. And she watched it as it grew larger and larger in the sky. Uh, finally, south of Twin Mountain, which you know was maybe a half hour, 45 minute drive, uh, she and Barney stopped because this object was coming in closer and closer. They got out of the car. For our first paranormal news, Daryl Marson has a new show called My Haunted Manor on My Haunted HQ channel on YouTube. The investigations will be done at the Samuel Miller Mansion in Columbia, Pennsylvania. The mansion has a rich history and is known for paranormal activity. The My Haunted Project is built on the idea of long-running paranormal investigations with 24-7 surveillance and real members of the public having real experiences inside their locations which can be fully documented. Those experiences are either rationally explained or deemed to be a genuine paranormal experience. My Haunted Hotel in Chester, England was established in 2022 and is the epicenter of the project. Now we have a preview video that explains more of what My Haunted does and talks about their new endeavor with Daryl Marston. Over the last two years, we've introduced the My Haunted Project to the world. The most unique project in the paranormal scene. A style of paranormal investigation like no other, with 24-7 surveillance and real eyewitness accounts. Oh my God! During these last two years, we have been able to back up over 1,000 eyewitness accounts inside the epicenter of this project. My Haunted Hotel. To date, we have caught four apparitions on camera, from shadow figures within this room here, to apparitions walking across the corridors of the hotel. My Haunted Hotel has been a dream of mine for 10 years, but now it's time to expand. As of 2024, we are taking this project international. And from now on, we will be my Haunted HQ. If there's one thing that we have learned is that this style of investigation truly works and it's become so popular, but now it is time to introduce you to the next stage of this journey. Working with the guys over in England, you know, this is an amazing opportunity to learn from them. My Haunted Manor USA is in Pennsylvania 
and is run by a team of investigators that know exactly how this project is run. The team, Daryl, Jeff and Trey, are experienced paranormal investigators and they will be running the My Haunted Manor USA in exactly the same format as My Haunted Hotel that still runs today. Guys, Daryl Marston here. You know me from Ghost Hunters, but now I'm with a new show, My Haunted Manor. Hey guys, I'm Jeff Bader, paranormal investigator from Delaware. I am super excited to bring all of our cameras in here, set them up, monitor this place 24 seven. We're ready to capture something on video. My name is Trey Bader. I'm a paranormal investigator. I've been doing this for about five years. I'm excited to bring people in here and offer them that same immersive experience as My Haunted Hotel. As of 2024, right here on the My Haunted HQ YouTube channel, you'll be getting access to three different shows. My Haunted Hotel, which has been running now for two years. My Haunted Manor USA, and finally, a third series, My Haunted HQ, which sees Harry, Brett, and I head out and take this format into other locations. And I tell you, before this is all said and done, you're gonna see some stuff that you've never seen in the paranormal. Come out here, check this out. Welcome to the future of paranormal investigation. Oh my God. Welcome to the home of the haunted. We're gonna be running seven days a week, 365 days a year here. The world's most documented ongoing paranormal investigation. Welcome to my haunted HQ. In other news, there is a new Ghostbusters movie out now. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. It has both some old and new members. The Spengler family returns to where it all started, the iconic New York City Firehouse, to team up with the original Ghostbusters who developed a top secret research lab to take busting ghosts to the next level. But when the discovery of an ancient artifact unleashes an evil force, Ghostbusters new and old must join forces to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age. The cast includes Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, Annie Potts, Ernie Hudson, Paul Rudd, Finn Wolford, Carrie Coon, and McKenna Grace. Here is a trailer. We're gonna need all the help we can get. Let's get to work. Call dark and horny at 12 o'clock. I've been waiting 40 years for this. They called themselves Ghostbusters. According to these hacks, they saved the world. No eyewitnesses. And who is found to carry the torch? Descendants of Egon Spengler. You have a miner hanging out the side of a moving vehicle, firing a laser gun indiscriminately. It has a proton pack. It's completely safe. I wouldn't say completely safe. The Ghostbusters are finished. Right, well, overruled. Sustained. Thank you. You the weird guy who buys strange old things? Correct on both counts. Buddy, you just hit the jackpot. What is it? Better question is, what's inside of it? Parables tell of an unimaginable evil commanding an army of ghosts. With the power to kill by fear itself. Like literally scared to death? We might be looking at a second ice age. We're gonna need all the help we can get. Let's get to work. Can I be of any help? Melnitz in uniform! Yeah! If there's something strange, if there's something weird, who are people going to call? Ghostbusters, what do you want? We're the Ghostbusters. Can I tell you something else? What? Buster makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. Heads up! All dark and horny at 12 o'clock.
In other paranormal news, a woman captures a ghost soldier on camera after a dog started barking like crazy. A woman claims she has captured the ghost of a soldier who massacred aboriginals lurking in her garden on camera after her dogs started barking like crazy. Lael Robertson, 51, was at her home in Queensland, Australia when her pets were unsettled by something outside. She checked her security cameras and was astonished to spot a human-like figure lingering just a few meters away from her porch. The image shows what she believes to be a soldier's legs with boots on and the dark shadow of an upper body described as unnaturally disfigured. The grandmother says she's been told the soldiers massacred aboriginals near her house during the 1800s and she believes one of them is haunting the property. She posted the snap on Facebook and users have since hailed it as evidence of paranormal activity and others said it gave them a bad and uncomfortable feeling. She said it looks like a soldier with his boots on, his legs are really clear, and they're transparent. In the 1800s there was a massacre here when there were troopers coming in and killing aboriginals. So it could be one of those. My dogs usually tell me if something's around that shouldn't be in the yard, and they were going crazy, so I went to check the footage. When I saw it, it just said, oh my god, what a bloody image we've just caught. I've been trying to put what's been happening here into the paranormal investigation world for around a year now, and everyone called me a liar. Now I've got this. I thought they can't say anything about this one, but they do. I feel like I found proof now. I don't know how we just got a photo of it and not a video, but because it's a motion sensor camera, it was just got a photo. It's taken me a while to get used to this sort of thing. The first year, I was very scared, but now I love it. Lael moved in the house four years ago and claims paranormal activity began two years ago with knocking on their windows and pictures falling off their walls. But some have claimed her proof is a camera lens delay from when husband Joe Wilson went outside. But Lael insists no one was outside that time and their dogs can sense ghouls. And now it's time for our ghost story segment. This one comes from the Paranormal Daily News, uh, author Temperance Dawn. It's called Bullock Hall, A Hidden Haunt Within Roswell, Georgia. Bullock Hall is nestled within the town of Roswell. Hidden amongst dense trees was a plantation home that produced cotton. Built by slave labor, it was constructed in 1839 by Major James Stevens Bullock, one of Roswell's first settlers. The historic site has been restored to look as it once did when first built, including a reconstruction of the slave quarters in the service yard. Guests can walk through and gain a sense of what slave life was like on this particular property. A plaque on the cabin lists the names of all known slaves who served at Bullock Hall. The exhibit is dedicated to all of them. As with many locations in the South, this one is no different when it comes to the history of slavery and war. The site was once a cotton plantation and was home to over 30 slaves, one of whom is said to have been a young girl around 14 years old. There are two wells located on the property, the first being in the front yard, which was used as the Bullock's primary uh, family source of drinking water. The second is located in the rear behind the home, and the story goes the young girl fell to her death in that well. Soon after her death, weeping could be heard coming from the well. Some visitors still report they can hear sobbing echoing from the now boarded up well. It is believed that her apparition has been seen inside the hall by visitors over the years. There have also been reports of lights flickering on and off within the hall. According to stories, the young girl's responsibility was to maintain the lighting within the home. Could this strange occurrence be the young slave girl still tending to her duties on the property? Some witnesses have also reported seeing men in Civil War dress peering out the second floor windows, and there have been sightings of a young boy running through the front yard. Even as the hall sat abandoned for a time, there have been eyewitness accounts of shadows walking the grounds, and many photos have been captured over the years of strange apparitions in the front yard and windows. Guests of the local ghost tour often capture these pictures along with unexplained thermal images. For our conference spotlight tonight, it'll be the Tombstone Wild West Paracon. The first one was so great, we're doing it again. Join us for the second annual Tombstone Wild West Paracon, April 26th, 27th, and 28th. Unlock excitement at the 2024 Tombstone Wild West Paracon. VIP packages, investigation speakers, workshops, an epic lineup for an unforgettable weekend. Join the adventure. 
Tickets are limited. Secure your spot now. The second annual Tombstone Wild West Paracon special guests will include multiple speakers and investigators, including Amy Bernay, Greg Lawson, Shane Pittman, Ghost Trip Investigations, and others, appearing in historic Shifflin Hall and investigating some of Tombstone's most haunted locations. There will also be paranormal workshops, vendors, a meet and greet, and more amazing and haunted Tombstone locations. Well, time has flown by. Thank you for watching this episode of This Week in Paranormal. We look forward to having another episode ready very soon. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to everything we do here at the CARC. So long until next time. This has been a CARC Universal Productions.